couple months ago on FTK Feature Focus, we took a look at TR1 expression searching within the index tab. That's based on regular expression, but specific for the index database. This week, we're gonna take a look at regular expression writing in the live search tab. And we're gonna take a look at it using a recent example of a breach that happened to Ikea. Welcome to this week's episode of FTK Feature Focus. Welcome to this week's episode of FTK Feature Focus. I'm Justin Tolman here at Xtero. And this week, like I said, we're gonna be looking at pattern searching using the live search tab. And to do that, we're actually going to take a look at a news article about a recent breach at Ikea, some of the things that were found in their email and how we can search for that in FTK. Now let's remember that it is important in any incident response plan to merge both incident response and forensics all together into one happy process. So we're gonna be talking about looking at it in a forensic tool here. This is not to say that you're not gonna be doing other things with incident response, breach management, and so on to sort the other issues that may have led to this. We're just gonna take this and look at it in a forensic light. So here we have the news article, just as something to have on the screen here. And what they were hit with was a reply chain email attack is an attack that's happening from within that the email server has been compromised in some way and that these emails appear to be uh, sent from within the network. They're legitimate emails, that sort of thing. And so it makes it really dangerous. Now, what did the emails contain? Well, in this case, they contained a link. Here's a screenshot from the article. Uh, that took them out and would prompt them to download a uh, malicious Excel sheet with a macro in that that would do some damage. But what they found is that the URL would always end with this dash followed by a group of digits. So if you were going to search through your corporate email or various data sets that you've captured from your endpoints using FTK Enterprise and agent capture or whatever the case may be, um, you're going to want to search your emails for links that then have a dash and then end with a certain amount of digits. So before we jump into FTK and take a look at how we can do this with our live search, just remember that if you index your email files, you can write TR1 expressions to do the same thing that we're doing here. We're just covering a different feature because we already looked at TR1. All right, let's jump into FTK and take a look. All right, so we find ourselves on the live search tab and the live search tab is broken up as you can see here with the numerous panes of the search, the results and the output of course, and you can view the files. Really simple overview there. We then have our three tabs, text, pattern and hex. We're gonna focus on the pattern tab. So that's where we are now. There are some small differences between regular expression versions out there, depending on what language it's looking for, what tool you're using, et cetera. So there are a few things that you need to be aware of. If you are looking for the symbols that you should use in the regular expression, it is listed here under the black arrow. Now you can select them and it will input them into your search area just like that. Um, but I would recommend actually writing it in a notepad or some other editor and then just copy and pasting it into the interface as clicking and menu and clicking and menu at, will be uh, very difficult. And there's no error checking in there. FTK will run whatever regular expression you put in there, whether it works or not. You just won't get any hits or you'll get the wrong hits. So I recommend using something like regex 101 or something like that to pre-build with some test data your regular expressions. That having been said, if you use regex 101 for start and end of word, the symbols are actually different. Again, make sure that you are comparing a little bit of the syntax when you bring it over. Also within the live search tab, you have the white arrow here, which stores your already written regular expressions. And this is both those written by Xtero developers as well as Access Data historically and any that you have also saved in there that you've written yourself. You can come down to edit expressions. It will open up the regexlist.ini. 
and within there you can write your own regular expressions and store them. In this situation, what was happening at IKEA was the emails that were being sent out contained links that would take the user out and encourage them to download a malicious Excel sheet. These URLs, as we looked at earlier, had a consistent structure. Consistent structure is a pattern, and we can thus use pattern searching to find emails that match that criteria. Now, I don't have the IKEA set, of course, and I didn't have something that really necessarily matched, but I wrote a, a simple regular expression that we could search emails for just to show how the process works. So first off, what you're gonna to wanna to do is understand how live search works in a general sense. Live search actually scans every object within your case at the hex level for whatever you're searching for. Because of this, it takes time to run because it's scanning everything in your case or it's scanning everything that you filtered down to and specify, but it's still going to specify at the byte level uh, of the file. So it's going to take a little bit longer, a lot of bit longer, depending on your search criteria, than index search that is just querying a database and returning the results. So what I recommend that you do when using live search is make sure to use your search filters. In this case, we're only looking at email. So what I could do is a couple things. I could either label the email that I wanna look at and search by that. I could check mark them, which is what I did here and filter it by that. Or I could also use the pre-built or user-built filters such as email files and attachments, so on and so forth to search for that URL. For my purposes here with this video, I just did checked files. The background will turn a yellowish hue to let you know that a filter is on, just that extra reminder, because if you were to turn this on, run the search, leave, come back and want to run another search on something else. It's an added reminder that, hey, you've got a filter on, make sure it's the right one. So at this point, we're ready to input our search pattern. I'm going to go ahead and open up a notepad here just so we can see maybe a little better. Now with this case, I didn't have any URL data really in my emails that I wanted to search for or anything. So a similar thing is uh, some data that we have in here just to show. What I want here at the beginning is, I wanna start at the beginning of the word or URL. So if I was doing a URL, it might be something like that. So at the beginning, you're gonna find this, okay? For our example, we're gonna be searching for the Armalite rifle type or AR type. Um, so we'll start off with AR. We want the start of our word to be AR. Then we're looking for one character. It might be a dash, a bracket, a parenthesis, a space, something like that. And so we don't have to specify here what we're looking for. You could specify numbers, letters, symbols, etc. if you wanted something specific. And then we're going to specify two digits because what I'm looking for are references to either an AR-15 or an AR-50 or something like that at the end of the word. And so that will be that. So that's gonna search for any Arma Light type weapon that is at least AR something, number, number. Okay, that's my very simple uh, regular expression that will search for any references to that type of rifle. So when I go ahead and run that, I get my hits on the email that I ran it on. We can expand this out and see we got a hit on AR-50, 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 AR-15, and so on through each one. If I select my hit, notice that it shows it in hex view. And this is because remember that the live search is searching at the byte level and we look at byte level in hex. So that's what it's gonna display for us. If you do not have the content tab switching set to automatic, if you have to manually change it, then it may not do that. But if you wanna read the content, go ahead and switch over to natural. You can go ahead and scan down and we can see our hit here um, for say AR-15. Right above it, we have AR-50. At this point, you could bookmark the relevant emails, figure out where they're coming from by looking at the header information of the email. Now, again, this was coming from internal, so mileage may vary, but at least you can see the information associated with how that email bounced through, maybe what server specifically it's coming from, all that sort of stuff that you can correlate with all of your other monitoring software for your email server, your intrusion detection systems, all that sort of stuff you can bring in and correlate with your forensic data 
found here in FTK. So real quick, how might you write a regular expression to search for URLs that end in a certain way? Well, there's a couple different ways to do it and a lot better ways, but just in the sake of time, we could say the start of the word, we're looking for HTTPS, and then we're looking for any character because URLs can have letters, numbers, uh, percent signs, dots, slashes, all sorts of stuff. And we don't know exactly how many that it has. Now, you probably want to limit this because this type of search can find a lot of stuff. You remember, you would have a data set we could see in the Ikea screenshot that these links weren't too long. So you could kind of get an idea once you found one email, set it to a certain limit and then run it. But for the simplicity of this, we'll just say star, find me anything. This then followed by explicit dash. And then remember that we had a digit uh, and we want to find that seven times. Okay. Uh, and then that was at the end of the word. So what it's going to start is I'm looking for words, or in this case, URLs, we're just referring to them as words that start with HTTPS. Then it's going to have a bunch of stuff here. Then I'm looking for a dash followed by seven digits at the end of the word. And so what you would look for through your emails is stuff that matched that criteria. Oversimplified, you could write it more complex than that to get even further narrowing based on the criteria of the URL that you have if you needed to do that type of search. And again, you could always load it in as a TR1 expression as well if those emails are indexed within your FTK instance. Cool, so I hope this video was somewhat informative in how you can use the pattern search within live search tab. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next week.